uh, another edition of Star Shadow Plays. Uh, I'm your host Rob, aka Star Shadow. We're playing some Star Traders Frontiers. Uh, fortunately, today we were having a little bit of trouble with the full screen setting. It was acting really badly. I have no idea what was going on. It's like it was trying to cover both screens for uh, both of my screens for some reason, and um, it was just running really badly. So I've had to switch over to a Windows mode. Uh, windowed mode in order to get it to run so it's probably gonna look a little bit smaller than what we're used to but um, still playable still should be fine so if you're wondering why there's a little bit of a uh, black space on the left that's why uh, anyway so last episode we finally got our new ship out of the uh, docking bay and now we're on the hunt for more money in order to continue to outfit the ship. Um, we picked up a couple missions that we're going to do, so we're going to get on that. And also, while we're in this area, we're going to take a quick jaunt over here to our Qatar Naval Recruiter. And we're going to check out the Wing Bomber Recruiter. We don't have the personal rep to do it, so we're going to pick up a mission. And also, check out the small craft which I'm not sure if we'll be able to buy but we'll take a look and of course first thing we do is run into someone who wants to fight but not really and they really don't want to take a bribe so I guess they'll Hurt our reputation some. It's fine. Not that big of a deal. So I'm getting used to the smaller play window here. It's not that much smaller, but it is a, a slight difference. But it's not that I can't handle. So let's check it out. All right. So services in the landing zone. So I didn't see that. I guess uh, it's not open. Maybe we obviously can't buy one of these yet. I can require infrastructure. Yeah, that's fine. But. Hmm, interesting. So it would be available. Okay, so. Uh, clean shuttles, bombers, and interdictors. We can redeem this by visiting the starport, but the starport is not open. Huh. So what's the point of having that be available if it's not opening? Hmm. Let's see if she's got permissions. Oh yeah, we did come through here before. Uh, so she wants us to grab a captive and... And work on it, okay. Well, let's do it too. Alright, well, we'll see what we can do if we continue on with this, so. Alright, let's go make some money. We're under 100,000. For the first time in a very long time. I'm not used to worrying about money, but it's fine. We'll figure it out. Alright, 
I'm curious here. Uh, let's just pick something. I have the weapons lock at five already. So I just want to figure out how to buy a ship. I'm not sure exactly what the... Protocol is. Oh, that's not. I want to maybe turn the new ship. No, it's not. Hmm. Barracks, uh, weapons. Grav cannon. Interesting. Seals. Yeah, I'm not even sure where I would even. Vance Lodge Bay. Shielded Launch Bay. Salvage Bay, okay. Let's see, oh, here we go now. So I just had to click on the hanger and then look. Oh, so I can't do that at the other one because I can't even upgrade anything yet. So I wonder. Uh, So these are what we got here. Blackburn 9, Falcon XP7, these are both the interdictors. Uh, uh, we have a bomber. Class 4 bomber, uh, class 1 bomber, class 2 shuttle. So this shuttles are for launching boarding, okay. So we'll have to figure out which one of these we would actually want. So they could, this is like our only ship here, a bomber. Uh, 62% hit chance, 20% evasion chance, strikes with a lot of damage though. Hmm. Bomber's kind of interesting because of... I'm, I think I'd be curious to see if it, I can use it to attack and still be moving forward and having to attack while we're boarding. I'm not 100% sure. This is why we wanted to do this. We want to check it out. But before we do that, buy one of these things, I think we need to make some more money so we're not hurting on anything. So this guy spent some time hiding in the shadows of the spice hall, and we gotta pick up his trail. Of course, we're gonna go with the electron skill because we have a ton of it. And with our 113 strong die versus their 29 strong and 54 standard, of course we'd win. So, we have time to do this one, so, we actually have time for both of them, so. Brand's Corridor, and this is Iron Forge, Abyss, and then Dragon Rim. I 
the other one is over here. So if we do this and then continue on, maybe that might work. Uh, let's do this one first because don't want to run out of time. Let's be cautious. process of trying to outfit this because if you don't have enough uh, captain ship cones uh, power generators even better uh, if you don't have enough fuel for for my liking right now Alright, let's see if we can pick up some stuff that we might be able to get some gas money for. Too much though. It's our wing commando who will soon be of interest to us. So the, the commando is very much a boarding shuttle kind of person, so not going to be the greatest for our bomber if that's what we decide to go with. But we'll be fine. We'll figure it all out. Wow. Uh, I can't sell you any of this stuff. It's sad. Spy, no problems. Yeah, this 65 AU fuel range is not my favorite. glad we have the jump talents here because that really is really helpful. Oh hey Larson, what's up? Good to see you back. Alright. Oh we can sell these. I should have bought more. That's not a big deal though. Alright. Can we pick up here? We can try and get rid of some of this stuff for a little gas money. All right, let's bust out the rare tree goods. That never happens. We don't have secure cells, so we do. Thought we did. Did I take them out? Mm. Kidding me, right? money to make money I guess I 
And I don't have a passion captain either right now. That upsets me. Oh, it would be Merc Mission. Oops, that's not what I want to show. Yeah, Pris Pr Prisoner now, yeah. I think I accepted this when... No, it just I bought this, the, the big new ship, and I haven't upgraded it to my preferred liking right now, and it's... I'm not sure what I have and what I don't have. Again, I thought I had put in my prisoner and passenger components in, but I guess I didn't. Yeah, because you can see this is it's a mess right now because we ran out of money. It just uh, we have a extra uh, officer quarters, and we have like a bunch of like reinforced structures that I was cycling through. So I think I I just didn't realize I had not put those in. So that was just me being screwing up. And we are definitely trying to make money. So <laughs> so I gotta do this again. So that means we're gonna get get screwed basically. Cause we <laughs> we did this we did so great we had a ton of money. And so we finally bought the big uh, sword battle cruiser. We started upgrading things. I did a few uh, quick upgrades, and I went and to a cheaper place to get more upgrades. And I was doing some of them, and it's just like, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I've done that in camera a couple of times, and it's way deep, <laughs> and it's harder to take notes on live. It's hard. The hard part is just I playing it once a week I forget what I've done and how everything's set up so it's sometimes it, these kind of uh, mistakes happen I guess but it's fine I luckily those things are cheap <laughs> uh, you take notes frequently yeah that it, that would be a smart idea but what can I say? <laughs> I'm silly like that sometimes. <laughs> it helps when, especially when you're old, as old as I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would think for the amount of gaming I've done in my life. I mean, I'm just about 40. So you would think that I've honed my note taking to a good level, but sometimes you just want to sit down and play and just let the chips fall as they may. And that's kind of what I'm doing, especially on, on this difficulty level where I'm just playing, just chilling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Face when we return to a game after some time and her like, <laughs> what the heck was going on here? Yep. Yep, so that's, that's my face every time, right before stream when I look at it and I have to figure out what I was doing and it's it's fine so I know I know there's got to be people watching going what are you doing did, didn't you realize you just did that last week and I'm like yeah yeah I forgot about it but it's fine so of course after the first time I've, I've hitting the mission success right away It's gonna take us 50 trillion tries to <laughs> to get that mission success again. <laughs> and the fun thing was just like I said right at the beginning of the stream is I was having some technical issues with it, and it that really threw me off as well. Think of it this way, making these mistakes live also helps others learn what not to do, which is just as educational and entertaining. That is 100% true. 
if there's one thing I'm sure people are learning from this is from my streams is that what not to do. Cause I've had some some fun things happen. But also a lot of good things happen, but that of course is difficulty level and I think in my next run I will up it. But, you know, it's fun to try and learn all of the new stuff that's going on. Hey, hey, mission success. Which is why I haven't started in the first place, because I really wanted to try out this craft system, but now I need money. This is why I bought the big ship in the first place, is in order to buy a craft and try that out. But I need money. And I need to get the crew member for it. Yeah. It's fine. Lots of updates still coming, yeah, I know. Which is... And that's the beauty of playing it once a week, is... There's always new stuff happening in here, and... I can just keep playing this game, because there's new stuff. Of course, if they add a new story... A new story arc to the end of uh, what they have, then... I can't get to it. Uh, on the race to carriers myself, yes. Alright, let's... Let's take out these guys. Oh yeah, I upgraded her to officer. She's an officer now. Pistolier, uh, military officer, so I have to get used to what I've done with her. Things are in a different order. I found that RTGs and artifacts are the best profit line to carriers. Yeah, I have a couple of uh, artifact places, which if I was taking notes, I would remember where they are. So, I've, at this point I started to uh, do some exploration, look for Xeno to actually fight, and look for artifacts, and uh, we're, uh, we did run into some rare trade goods uh, previously, and we were selling them. I think some of them are on my last ship though, and, or did I sell all of them? Mm. But, uh, we're in position now where we will not run too often from Xeno if we fight them, because, you know, we can take them. But if we're going somewhere, you know, we're on a mission or something, then I... I run from them. I uh, made it to 245 before hitting 1 mil by normal trading and commercial missions. Oh man, I have no idea where I'm even at. But we hit, I hit, I was close to 2 million before I bought the ship. Uh, So we, you know, the ship was a million, well, it was just under a million because of the uh, discounts. And so we still had, like, close to a million to spend on upgrades. And the ship came with so much stuff. I was just like, oh, man, I got to really rearrange stuff. <laughs> that was way too late. That was so behind the power curve and died for getting my ship. Yeah. I hear that. Like, the last ship I had was decently powered, and and we ran with that one for a long time. A good... had to have been at least 20, 30... 30, what, years, I guess, is what, what they count as. And it, it was a... definitely a, a great ship. But then, you know, the craft system came out, and... I really wanted to try that out, and I didn't have enough space, and I didn't want to rearrange things, so I was like, well, let's go for a bigger ship. <laughs> I want to make a Jur into a mini carrier? Oof. That, oof. That's, inter that's an interesting idea, especially with it being so small. But, um... 
yeah, that that could, that could be interesting. I I play so generalist that it just having a big ship and being able to throw everything in as much as possible. I guess uh, I gotta learn how to specialize. So, uh, what one craft would you be using for your carrier? The boarding craft, or would you go for like a bomber? I can slip through here and get some gas on the way as long as I don't get attacked. Uh, the community challenge will most likely be a bounty hunter challenge. Interesting. I haven't taken part in any. May have to look into that. Now that I've started playing on my phone. Uh, so you've taken interdictor to take some hits for the juror okay i'm still trying to figure out what i want to do with with my ship here but i also play it really weird since it's a big ship and then i getting close and bored <laughs> you know that it, it makes more sense to have a small ship to do that i think but it's just so satisfying right the the challenges are open on all platforms yeah, that's what I was saying. Now that I've started playing on my phone, I think I might maybe I might join in one on on there. Or if I ever had a time where I was streaming all day, then maybe I might do one on stream that way. But I don't think it would be a good idea. <laughs> Uh, shared your link. Oh, <laughs> thanks. I mean, the funny thing about this this run is is that I've been doing it so long. It's like at almost like forty episodes of this, which is crazy. So I'm, I'm kind of tempted just to keep going and go for like the full year of playing the one run. Oh wow, that, that was dumb. That was uh, independent. Alright. <laughs> Very impressive. Uh, thank you. It's all up on YouTube and... People do watch it for some reason. It makes me, you know, I'm just surprised. I never expected anyone to watch anything. So, heck, I never expect expect anyone to watch here either. So it's fine. <laughs> I'm glad there's a large community. It's 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 wonderful when I get a comment and hearing about people that it. One of my streams is encourage them to try to play another round, play another sort of another game. It's, just, it's really cool. Especially since I haven't started another. Well, I did, actually I did start another game, like I said, on my phone. <laughs> uh, most are not vocal, but all will watch to see your playstyle. Well, my playstyle is. I don't know. I don't know what my playstyle is. <laughs> Very loosey goosey, I think. <laughs> uh, you have two phones and two PCs. Yep, I have. Let me see here. Yeah, I have two phones, only one of which I use now. Um, I have two PCs, but I'll be building another one fairly soon. Um, <laughs> you have Atreus Brothers games on all of them, yes. 
I'm, I'm sure that uh, they are very happy for your support. I mean, that was why I was like, oh, the game came out on the phone. I really should support uh, support them by buying it. And so I did. And it's, it's cool to have it uh, available to play if I, when that itch comes. You know, and you can kind of spread the, the word to people. Always try to mention it to my friends when when they see me playing. So, right. you're just not gonna let me go for free. So, I just walk away. All right. So, heading to. Dude was heading to the LA board of smuggler ship. And now we need to follow it to completion. Someone in the space hall. Okay. Hopefully we get the Kickstarter campaign for Cyber Knights by the Cyber Knight sequel by the end of the year. I actually don't know anything about it. I'm gonna have to look into it. Alright, actually I think I got off off target here. Yeah, I did get off target. <laughs> but yeah, I, I really don't know anything about Cyber Knights. And it would just happen... I'm trying to remember how I, I, I found out about this game. But I know, I uh, know I heard it mentioned, someone mentioned it to me, and I was like, oh, that sounds really cool. So I checked it out, and here I am playing it, you know, for almost a year. Yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty close to a year, actually. Uh, Cyber Nights RPG is their second game, I believe. Just as Star Traders Frontiers is a direct sequel to Star Traders RPG. Okay. Oh, so the Cyber Knights RPG is available on Android. Okay, I'm going to have to check that out and see what I think about it. Alright, here we go. Okay, so Star Traders RPG and Elite are also available on both iOS and Android, okay. Yep, I'm an Android man, so that's what I'll be checking it out on. Once I have a look. Uh, so, Star Trek Frontiers is essentially 150 years after the RPG. Okay. So I guess it's all a uh, linked kind of uh, universe and maybe not a continuation of the story. Always find that cool. So I can buy the wing bomber from you now. Get you leveled up. Start leveling you up at least. But it's, it's crazy that you have the discounted craft, but I can't do anything about it because I can't upgrade. Unless I can come in here and do it. Nope. Oh, so they give me a dude. We'll fix you a little bit later. 
get you acclimated into our new family here. Oh, actually, I should do this first. Uh, Cyber Knights RPG is a cyberpunk setting. You play as a knight in the chess game of corporate and faction warfare. Huh. That could be interesting. Not really a cyberpunk guy, but... Finding a little bit more of it to be interesting now, so it, it maybe it might... It might trick my fancy once I, once I take a look at it. All right, you got a lot of stuff. Bombing run. Uh, uh, you can hire other members to your squad in it. Okay. And it's definitely worth trying the free version. Okay. Yeah, that's always a... Uh, a good thing, a uh, free version always fun to at least be able to try and see, you know, what you think of it before you start trying to spend some money on it. The problem is, it's just I got a couple of mobile games I'm playing that are taking up too much time. But I, I think I'll look at it and see what what I think about it. Alright, so they got a couple different patterns that they can use here. I guess they're just as a minus one reactor, 25% accuracy, 25, negative 25% defense. This is a component damage, okay. Which is kind of cool. Also a component in morale. Okay, so that's a crew killer. And this is a minus. I think uh, that looks like something interesting to me. And anything with a card is usually what I want. But hmm, interesting. Let's, let's look at that. And check that out. All right. So sequel is my most anticipated game from them, it's why I'm glad I have them grow and promote Star Trek Frontiers. And your cyberpunk guy and the space opera guy is second. Very, it's a very close second. I'm a fantasy guy first and then space opera guy second. But space opera tends to be pretty pretty close to fantasy as it is, so. <laughs> Like, normally Cyberpunk doesn't hit for me at all, but there's been a few things. Uh, so I got it. Yeah. It's way out of the way. Alright, let's go make that money. And we'll see if we run into any context that I want to do missions for. Let's see what you're up to. Uh, started out a fancy, as, as you will, growing up in Tolkien Shadow and its eventual influence into tabletop games. Yes, yes, that's what that's what got me into fantasy is, is Tolkien back in grade school when I 
read it for the first time. I don't need to do that. Let's check to see what your missions are. Also love space and science fiction even more than fantasy. I think I was more into space into more in my college days. It still didn't overtake fantasy, but I was studying a little bit of physics and I think that kind of really got me thinking a little bit more about space and, and uh, especially the hard science fiction kind of stuff was always interesting to me even though I didn't read very much at that time but I had some friends that were into it and they used to tell me about things and I was always like that was that sounds cool uh no definitely not doing that you gotta pay me some money <laughs> so just matured as one does through their journey and cyberpunk has always been a major setting for me because it's almost inevitable yeah i just haven't been exposed as much to cyberpunk um i've seen a little bit of stuff on it and kind of been around it and cyberpunk also allows for everyone to be super maybe that's why it hasn't really hit for me as um not a like I'm not into like superheroes or like a lot of uh, people are it just that just doesn't appeal to me as much for some reason it, even though it's like fantasy kind of does that in a different way so I don't know I don't know why that it, it never did but it, it started to, to make a little more sense to me now it's starting to get a little more excited about it like I'm excited about like the, the cyberpunk um what is it 2077 that's gonna be coming out from um the guys that did the witcher i'm really excited about that even though cyberpunk has never been my kind of thing yeah not in the same manner of superhero as you would think high tech low life um yeah i, I understand that it's it is different and i think it's just taking me a while to get to a point where I can kind of uh, appreciate that more I think is, is what I'm trying to say uh, or, yeah that's what I thought it's in the other direction I mean honestly the, the first real introduction to cyberpunk for me was ghost in the shell and not even the the, the movies but the the uh, anime uh what is it the what the heck is that what for whatever version is the anime version so i watched the the couple of seasons of those and i thought that was really cool Yeah, standalone complex. That's the one. Yeah, I watched the, both the seasons of that and really enjoyed it. So that kind of, and you know, I only watched that the, not that long ago. I mean, relatively long ago. I mean, it was like a good seven, ten years ago. But you know, you got to be primed in order to really start enjoying things like that. So that that's kind of primed me a bit, and now I'm not as you know, someone says you're punk to me now, I'm like, oh, you know, maybe this will be interesting. So not seeing, you know, Cyberpunk 2077 coming out and it's just, I'm primed and ready to go for it. It's, it's great. And yeah, it, it's a culmination of a mythos that's exist, existed for 30 years and based on a tabletop RPG. And I think that might be something as well that I never really appreciated because I wasn't much into tabletop RPGs. I didn't really have a lot of friends that played them. So I dabbled in some D&D &D usually actually on uh, forums but hardly ever played, got to branch out into some of the other 
uh, types of uh, tabletop RPGs. Uh, Ghost in the Shell is indeed very cyberpunk with hold up to the original versions of what cyberpunk is the general was. It's also heavily inspired by Blade Runner and Akira. I've never actually seen Blade Runner, even though I have seen Akira. One of my friends in college was uh, not a big anime guy, but uh, he had an appreciation for it, and that was one of the first ones he showed me. And I thought it was cool, even though it was a little, a little much for me at the time. I just kind of wasn't quite sure what to, to think of it at first. Uh, try Shadowrun. It's a mashup of fantasy and cyberpunk. Like I know there's a. Uh, it's available across the, like a bunch of different media, uh, like the tabletop RPG, and uh, I've seen the setting in games too. So I'll have to look into that as well. Have you seen the movie Bright? Uh, is that the Netflix one? I have to admit, I watch very few movies. If I have time to sit and do something that long, I'm always prefer to game over watching something. Yeah, the one with Will Smith in it. Yes. Uh, no, I I did see. Uh, I've seen it. Didn't watch it, but I did. I do recall. The movie and hearing a little bit about it uh and it did sound interesting but but like i said it's just i don't have the <laughs> the how should i put it i want to say uh, attention span but i just would rather game pretty much the only thing i watch nowadays is um Sports. Like I don't even watch that much anime anymore, even though I, I really enjoyed it. I get my my kick on that from uh, manga. Altered Carbon is also very heavily cyberpunk, and I've heard great things about it, and it looks super cool. But yeah, just thinking about sitting down and do and and watching it is just <laughs> just the yeah just kind of go eh. it's like I don't watch I didn't watch Game of Thrones I don't watch Breaking Bad or any of those shows like that it's it's just I, I just can't do it <laughs> this looks like a money maker Oh, I gotta have a passionate Kevin for it. Uh, too mainstream? Uh, it's not about main, being mainstream. It's it's just me, just not interested in uh, that much in watching something when I could be doing something more interactive. Like I said, I don't watch movies. I don't go to the movies, but maybe once a year. But I also get headaches from from all the the noise and stuff. It's just, but uh, TV shows even it just even with DVR and being able to watch it whenever whenever you want is it's just like eh, I'd rather game, I'd rather control the things and and um, play myself. <laughs> watch Game of Thrones when the books are finished. <laughs> Yeah, that that would be. I mean, I, I'm I'm ready for the 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 next one to come out, but I uh, just basically just followed along with, with the show. Didn't watch it, just kind of follow along with like recaps and stuff. Cause that was that was good enough for me. Three. Uh, I would have to take something out. I think two, three, four, five, six. Uh, seven. 
they're very much the same way prefer to have interactive media as a mental exercise yeah I, th I think that's part of it it's just you know I used to watch a decent amount of TV but it's just you know just over the, even the past few years just kind of giving it up you know it's it's just the only thing that really keeps my attention is, is sports I think a lot of pe people like you don't watch TV anymore. There's like, either you watch a lot of it or you really don't watch any. And that's fine. Well, you know, my wife watches a lot of TV. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, it's probably better for her that I don't watch anything because then she can just kind of watch whatever she wants to watch. I mean, she DVRs a, a bunch of shows and watches them when uh, the little girl's sleeping or, or at other times. So, no, I'm perfectly fine to let her use the TV like that. And I can use, uh, you know, got my computer. We got other TVs with my consoles hooked up to them. And it's, yeah, <laughs> sports doesn't help the species to become better. <laughs> I played a lot of sports growing up, so I, I'm very much into the, that culture. So that's that's why I watch them. It's something I wish I got back into a little bit more myself uh, for some exercise purposes. Is um, is that all right? I gotta I gotta figure out here. Okay, I didn't do anything with you, but I have you. Okay, I think I can probably take you out. Two, two. <laughs> Into sports and then not. Hmm. Yeah, that, that happens. People fall out of love with sports. It's Yeah, especially if uh, that, that you're against uh, any other exercise, it's necessary for wellness. Yeah, I mean, I'm still, I mean, like I said, it's all kind of changed a little bit for me it's i wish i played more sports but you know it's you know my friends really don't and so i kind of got away with the format and you know my wife my wife doesn't really do any of that stuff but you know it's in it was always enjoyable so it's like if i never had the opportunity to do it and it's something i really wish I kept up because I'd be in much better shape now if I was still playing and um, you know it's, it's just only recently I got back into really exercising got myself a exercise bike uh, to to even get some real vigorous exercise in and you know been doing a lot of like even just like stretching and stuff like that <laughs> use it or lose it is a real thing oh yeah that's that's definitely true. All right, I'll take this out and put it in the passenger cabin. Yeah, I, I, it's procrastination will never make it easier on yourself. That is 100% true. And that's why I've, I've, even just getting into the little bit of exercise I do has been hard, but But it's gotten a lot better. I've been doing a lot better. Feel a lot better. And it just, it really makes me want to go out there and <laughs> and play basketball for a little bit or pick up tennis again, which I was never really good at and only played a little bit of, or soccer or something. But, but it's fine. Keep your core healthy and keep it strong. That is exactly it. And it helps having a little bit of a uh, of inspiration and having a a little girl. All right. Normally I would fight them, but I'm getting close to my my time.
and I'd really like to finish this ship up a little bit better before I get into a big fight. Okay, well. Their par parents retreat. Okay, perfect. So just barely made it. I can't sell you for nothing. How many star systems do I got here? One, two, three, four. Okay. Let's see if we can make it. More Xeno. Jeez. Just said I'm not going to fight you guys right now. Really, it's an emergency jump now. Oh, it's so damaged now. Oh, well, let's go get it. Clear it up. No, did take a risk. All the years of martial arts training, pushing my body past limits for my family, then becoming more of a full-time parent, and then running out of time to take care of myself, sprinkled in deep depression, and back at osteoarthritis near the rheumatoid setting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, I've... I didn't really train in martial arts or anything, but, you know, it was just... You know, you meet someone they're not into the same things you are get a sprinkle in some laziness and then just kind of kind of get out of it a little bit and you know going through employment kind of things and back to school and stuff kind of run out of time you don't really think about it or always like eh, I can do this another time but, you know, finally I'm kind of comfortable in my life enough that I feel like I can kind of challenge myself to do stuff like streaming. It's not something I would ever, ever thought I would do. Just not that kind of person. But, you know, getting a chance to try all this stuff out. And then, you know, Getting back into exercise, getting back into, you know, trying some new stuff, and, you know, it's good. <laughs> Life is what happens when you're busy, when you're busy making plans and writing your destiny. Yep. 100% agree. And when life finally slows down. Uh, it finally slows down enough for you to really feel like you're accomplishing something. It's perfect. Still can't sell this stuff. Ugh. It's crazy. I really need some more f fuel tanks or something in here. Just so unused to having to make so many stops. I mean, of course, being super cautious about traveling is not helping, but it's fine. I believe the next system is where I want to be. Yep. Uh, let's fuel up again before we head all the way out there. Oh, man. All right. So let's get out here, and this is this is where I'm gonna stop for the day. Is 
at this planet. Oh. All right. This will be good. This is gonna be it for today. You know, don't get a lot of time to play, but get in my hour. So, uh, be putting this video up on YouTube in course of a day or two, so I uh, can look for it there. Of course, if you're enjoying the content, drop a like. Always appreciate it. Uh, if you have a comment, always happy to see a comment as well. You can subscribe on YouTube as well and find out when new videos drop from, uh, from this series, from my other series I'm playing right now. Um, you can follow the channel's social media uh, on Twitter at StreamsByStar. Uh, it's when I usually remember to let people know when I'm going live. and But I always let everyone know when a new video is up on YouTube. So, half a dozen on one hand, uh, six on the other. And of course, uh, always enjoy having people join me on Twitch at twitch.tv backslash anti star shadow. Um, it's always fun to chat with people as I'm playing. And so I'd like to thank Laura Sin for joining me today and give me some good conversation. I really, always really appreciate that. So, um, once again. Thank you for joining me, and uh, I hope to see you again next week.